Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Model Kids Beginner. We have a midweek special. Oh, yes, we do. And it is what you can see, wrong hand, what you can see over here, the Vanishing Mark 1, which is a twin Mustang kit. Why is it a midway special? Because uh, lots of people were keen to see what this particular box looks like, because this is not your normal box. This is uh, a big one. Here we are. We should just go kick over the top here. Here you go. Box is round about 65 centimeters in length. Um, the model itself will be round about 47 centimeters and round about 18 meters wide. But it's not only one model, there are two models in here. There is a normal 1 to 25. And then there is this biggie. Uh, she is huge. There's nothing at the back. Box is relatively simple. There's nothing special to see here, which is a good thing because she's rather heavy. Right. And uh, it is from a company which uh, is written here in Japanese, I suppose. Let me have a quick look. It is from a company which is not generally very well known it's called Doyusha and uh, Doyusha uh, repopped this kit because we had this kit before I know my friend Paul Birkland he has a, a white one uh, one of these so um, I thought well it might be quite interesting to look into this particular boss I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this and especially how I'm going to make sure uh, that everything fits underneath the camera probably won't, but uh, we'll just do it. Eat the elephant piece by piece. Right, but first let's have a look at the history of this kit, and I guess we we'll, should do this right now. So please uh, help me to pop over to Scalemates and we see what they have to say about it. I'll see you over there. Right, and here we are with the vanishing Mach 1, uh, the twin Mustang. And uh, from the fine folks over at the Yusha, which I don't think they do exist uh, anymore. This was a 1985 repop with new parts and the latest edition, the newest edition of this particular kit. And as you can see, it comes with lots of plastic sprues in uh, 112 and 125. What you do not see here, multicolored instruction papers, can't wait to see that. What you don't see here is decals, do you? I Me mean neither, so we'll have to see. I haven't opened the box, promise I haven't opened the box, so we will have a look if there are decals in there. Right, now we obviously have this one, but this goes back to the company with the name of Otaki. And they came out with this particular one. This was the first uh, iteration and this came out in 1971 because this is a 71 Mustang. So it is a brand spanking new car and there were certainly there. A couple of iterations over here. Then a peerless Otaki, last one from Otaki in 1983. Looks like then they sold their molds to Yushi. And then we have a white one and a yellow one. I think that's the one Paul has and this is the yellow one. Right, so this was the original kit and then obviously they also had a Mustang SWAT car. I mean, who doesn't need a SWAT car? Come on, that is just amazing. There you go. I'm sure this one will have some decals. Anyway, so this is uh, what we had to could find out about the twin Mustang from Yusha. Very, very nice. Let's uh, zoom out just a little bit. Here we go. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm very excited to dive into this. So I would suggest we go down to the bench and have a look what is in uh, in that huge box. It'll be quite exciting. So I'll see you down there. So here we are down at the bench and the thing doesn't fit in shot. I've tried, I'm, I'm all the way up with my camera 
and it just doesn't fit in. But we'll see most of it, so that should be alright. Let's take off the lid, see what it looks like inside. As I said, I, have, I haven't peered, I had to look what it looks like inside. But I haven't taken anything out, I haven't touched anything. So this is what it is. This is the body, 112 body. There are a couple of parts, uh, transparent parts. There is the 132 body and uh, many other things. <laughs> oh, that is really, really special. I must say, I'm enjoying this a lot. Right, I would say we will take it piece by piece and see if we can't, uh, you know, get a little bit closer to the details. Let's do that. So let's take that away. Here we are. That next to us. And we start, as we usually do, with the instruction booklet. Comes an instruction booklet and there's a special booklet which uh, is in Japanese. As uh, this one appears to be in Japanese. And since my Japanese is a bit rusted, I'm afraid, I cannot tell you what it says. But obviously the pictures speak for themselves, so that should be alright. Here we go. Start with the engine, well, start with the, with the belt assembly of the engine, engine itself. You can even use a hammer on this, really? Really? You want to use a hammer? Are you sure? Anyway, so that's the engine and it has the normal uh, leads, coil leads, or spark plug leads. Oh, wow. That obviously doesn't give you an idea of the size of the parts, but it gives you an idea how it comes together. Here we go. And that looks like it has a nut involved as well. Here we go. That's very, very interesting. Part of the suspension. Oh, look at that. You even assembled the leaf springs. That's very cool. I have no idea how many parts are in here. I really don't know. Uh, was it maybe on the side of the lid and I have missed it again? I'm very good at that, missing out on sizes and number of parts. Mm. No, 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 it doesn't say. It's quite a few. It's actually the, the other, uh, I always say that the small Mustang is a 125, it's actually a 124, so I apologize. I found that out, so at least, here we go, that goes together well, so this is all the big 112 Mustang. I'm guessing, looking at the parts, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Here we go, interior, suspension, bit of detail on the suspension, uh, how about that, that uh, looks cool, I don't care what you say. Here we go, and then the door panels, assemble the door panels over here. Very interesting. That's obviously so. The doors obviously will need to be able to be open. That's cool. That's really cool. And we go on with the windows. Uh, huge rear window, of course. They always did have radiator assembly dashboard. Oh, excited to see the dashboard. Just want to say, look at that. There's a sign of the steering wheel on the right but no it's just upside down dashboard here we go we have more parts right over here we have the wing oh no that's a spoiler spoiler right over there i think there was a wing on the previous yeah there's a wing right over there you see that yeah and uh more assembly of uh, bumpers and the like the hood comes together, rear, a little rear window right over there, this is the mirrors, and here we have all the sprues, here down there you can see what the parts are called, can you speak Japanese, I can read it, or both, here we go, and I don't see There's screws and all kinds of stuff involved here. What I don't see is an instruction sheet for the small Mustang. Let's get all the papers out. Here are 
Here's a promotional piece, very, very nice. Lots of Japanese cars, but there's an Aston Martin. I guess this is the 112 range, I would assume. Oh, look at this beautiful Mercedes. 450 SL. Oh, you've got to love this. Right, and then the beautiful BMW 3.5 CSL. One of the most uh, beautiful BMWs. Uh, a couple of Lancia Stratos here. So yeah, they had quite a selection. Very, very nice. Still haven't seen anything about the 112. Then we take this off here. See if we can pack this all in very nicely. So where do we start? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right. We have a bit of space around me, so we will. We will take it piece by piece. Right. I would say we going and start with the smaller 124. Not 124. 124 scale Mustang. These seem to be the parts all in one bag right over here let's just get everything out there we go and there uh, it has its own instruction booklet we have it right over here here we go american motors the 71 mustang it's not american motors it's ford oh yeah uh, they probably mean motors from america here are all the sprues and then a rather brief instruction sheet. And even the, even the 24 one has uh, opening doors, so it seems to be they just have scaled down. Well, obviously there's a lot less detail. But yeah, so this is the instruction sheet from the 125, also in Japanese only. And I was right, I didn't see A. No, nothing. Didn't see any decals. So decals are not included in this particular key. Probably from 1981. They wouldn't be very good anyway. But yeah. So here's the chrome. Uh, we can actually go down a bit here. Isn't that great? Here we go. So here are the chrome parts of the little Mustang. Here we go. Yeah, looks 85-ish. Too bad, but yeah, here we go. Why? So uh, they have the connection right over there where you will see it loud and clear. So this will, we will have to be de um, uh, Yeah, Not the first time we've seen this, and I'm afraid it won't be the last. Oh, they have got the clear parts in with the normal parts. They certainly need to have a separate bag and they look like they have been in with the normal parts. A bit of scratchy here. Yeah, they will need some polishing out. And uh, yeah, that's just a bit of a pity. But I'm sure I have a plastic bag here somewhere where I can keep them extra to one side. And that they don't get damaged any further and we have the wheels which actually look very nice i like those very very nice cool wheels i like that we have tires right over here They're actually nice and soft should we open them up yeah what the heck let's open it up and have a look at one of them here we go, they have a little seam down there, but really a little. Very nice profile, very pronounced, and boy are they branded. Beautiful Michelin branded tires. You see that, Rivel? Yeah, just say. Very, very nice. Love those tires, very nice. And polycaps as well in the little baggie. Right. Then there is a, a yellow sprue which gives us the outer doors right over here and the wing and part of the mirrors I would assume which we see right over there. 
mold it in yellow. There we go. There you go. Yeah, I forgot to put my dark green background on here. I think I will do that before I start with the big one. Then we have the uh, orange lights. Very nice. I don't see any red ones. So everything appears to be orange. Okay, we can check, check. That's not a problem. And then there are two black screws. One is right over here, which gives us the uh, dashboard. Here we go. Very, very nice. That's, here we go. You can see the detail a little bit better. That's pretty cool. And there's actually very nice detail in here. I don't know how it falls together. I'll tell you that later. But yeah, there is some detail in here which I, for a kit of this vintage, is not bad at all. Then we have uh, again the bottom part of the engine. I haven't seen any engine parts. So yeah, this one is a curbside. So the small one is a curbside. Uh, yeah. There we go console right over here seats very nicely textured all in all not bad at all I really need to put a different background on here right now you can see it's nicely textured here we go and then last but not least we have the beautiful body and the underside here's the undercarriage pan if you want so we so put in the seats this is what it looks like at the bottom there we go so lots of stuff is molded in uh, in this scale and uh, yeah, that's fine that's not a problem and then we have the beautiful body of the 71 mustang very nicely and strongly um, supported for transport like that the body uh, needs quite a bit of tender loving care there are quite a few sharp edges and blemishes which you want to have a go at you don't want to go too heavy because obviously there's some 3d um, detail on there which you obviously would like to have a go at yeah. Yeah, there's, it's a smart uh, one right over there so that's the body. We, uh, yeah, it needs it needs some work, needs some cleanup. But that's not a problem, is it? Yes, we don't mind that. All right, we're gonna pause quickly and just put a different background on before we move on to the big stuff. Well, here we go. That's a more uniform background. Let's see. Let's hope this works better. So here's the here's the glass, which is fortunately packed separately. And see my fingers and the headlights. Quite nice and big. I'm not going to take it out of the package for obvious reasons, but yeah, some huge pieces of glass and they look a lot better than the ones we have seen with the 124 version. Actually doesn't look too bad at all for 1985, I think we can work with that. Right, while well, we are with glass, there's a bit more right over here and here is where we start opening up stuff a little bit. Why, why not? have a closer look at it here we go right here we have red and uh, orange lights which is very nice here you go there are some red lights and there are some orange lights beautiful they seem to be identical to be quite honest ah, that's very interesting seems to be the same lights in orange or in red all right interesting right then we have uh, first of the chrome trees seem to be some engine parts there certainly is a fan which i can tell you now for nothing was not chromed and some other parts which we have. so there will be some major dechroming operations going on the chrome itself maybe a little bit on the thick side i would say but very shiny. I don't say it's not shiny. And here, even you have uh, plates if you want to put it on a bigger 
display. Right. And while we are with the chrome, we have another chrome back right over here. There we go. And that's not only chrome, that's also black sprue in here for whatever reason with some suspension parts if I have to guess. Then we have wheels, very very nice. Reminds me of uh, some Tamiya Porsche wheels, not entirely uh, chrome chrome shiny but a little bit of a madness over it which looks fantastic. I like those wheels, they actually look very good I think. Then we have uh, this one here with a huge bumper and uh, front part, uh, the light covers, big exhaust, part of the wheels right over here, some chrome valve covers, I'll give you that, they might have had chrome valve covers, some other shiny parts over here which I'm not sure what they are, and then another bumper right over here. Uh, looks like we might have to, depending how it fits in, we might have to dechrome that. But yeah, let's let's go up a little bit so we get a better idea of the size here. She's already a biggie. Here we go, compared to my hand, and I do not have small hands. Here we go. So that is the chrome trees, and I think that's all of them. We go on with the plastic. Right, before we go on with the plastic, let's have a quick look at this. There is a bag with some other stuff. Now, I don't want to lose any of this, but anyway, we will carefully open it up and uh, see what is in here. So these are the tires. You see they are sizable. And these are Dunlops, they are not Michelins. Very interesting, but they are branded, so that's very nice, of course, we like that. And they look very realistic. They really do look very realistic. A bit of a seam in the middle, which you need to take care of, but otherwise. 175 SR14s, it says. Ah, uh, I'm sure they were wider than 175. But anyway, that's what they say. Here we go tires and then there is a bag oh that's luckily that's packed in a different bag so there's are the wires for the spark plug wires there's a little bit of a tool some screws which you're going to use and this long pen which might be an axle mind you probably is so there are a couple of screws not too many but there are a couple of screws nuts uh, in here even a looks like a gasket ring of sorts so there's some interesting stuff in here and uh, I'm not going to open this up once, it's not, not necessary. Right, but now, as promised, we will get to the plastic. And we start with this one right over here, a black screw, pack it. And uh, open it up. Put that to one side and let's have a look. So this looks like radiator, so that gives you an idea of the detail right over here. Pretty cool. This is uh, behind the grill. You will see that. Look at these. Here we go. Here we have some uh, tachometer and the speedo right over there. So you can detail that very nicely. That's actually pretty cool. The 112 guys are probably yawning. Yeah, yeah, they all have that belt. I have built a 112 before. Then this is obviously the rear axle assembly with differential. I think there are some engine parts. Here are the enormous leaf springs. This looks like the, what we call it in German, the head shelf at the back of the car. Where as kids we used to sleep. Of course, today you can't do that. And this leaves will be part of the console. Here we go. There's our first sprue. And here we start with the next one. Flying in from the side. Also black. So let's open this up. 
all packaged in this uh, thin, cheapy plastic bags, but uh, stapled clips. Remember Tamiya? Tamiya did that for a long time. Might still do it for all I know. Right, let's go over here. So these, oh, here's the dashboard. Here we go. Here we go. I'll do it upside down because I you know, can see it better. Yeah. There's the dashboard, and this is obviously where those parts go in, which we have just had a look. The instruments. There, uh, that looks very nice. There's a radio. And additional, additional uh, instruments are right over here. And some other parts. Don't know if it has a roll cage. Not sure. Some frame over here. Frame construction. Here's the battery. Part of the suspension right over here. Very, very nice. Very nice. And here is a styrene pipe. Okay. Cool. That brings us to the next piece of uh, styrene right over here. Let's uh, open this up. So we'll be opening up a lot of bags if you have one of those. Here we go. Let's see what is that. That is obviously the what goes above the dashboard, dashboard cover. And this might go to the doors. I don't know. It has another grill right over here. Maybe that's for the lower part. There certainly is a petrol tank. The steering wheel is a two-part construction. That's again part of the radiator assembly right over here. So you want to have a look at the detail and why not? Here you go. It gives you, gives you more or less an idea. There's some very nice texture on this stuff. And it looks clean. It is. Uh, don't use overly amounts of flash or that kind of stuff. Not at all. It's pretty cool. And that brings us to our second last black sprue. Right, right over here. Lots of these staples here. Let's just keep the camera. I apologize. Right. Let's put the microphone a bit closer. Let's hope that helps. Here we go. And another black sprue, as I said, second last one, which looks like has the engine and gearbox in one. We have uh, the top right over here, oil pan right over there. Yes. Uh, here we go, you, you see the brakes, brake disc, actually very nicely structured, very nicely textured. There we go. Don't know, did it have drum at the back? Looks like it, huh? Yeah. Anyway, those are the brakes, part of the engines right over here. And that looks pretty cool. I think it does. It really does. Oh boy, is she a bee. Just to give you another idea, here's my hand. And you can see how big that engine is. Yeah. Lots of glue, lots of paint, lots of patience, hopefully. Right, let's move on to the next one. And here we are. We have uh, the last black sprue, which you will find right over here. Open those up. And this looks like headers, back part of the wheels, air cleaner right over here, part of the exhaust assembly. Um, these are the, oh that's very nice, these are the, uh, the belt assembly right over here. No idea what that is. For part of the suspension I suppose. This is a part of the engine possibly yeah I think so and uh, yeah so that is what the last black screw looks like there's not particular this is not lots of detail in this a little bit right over here but apart from that is basically all clean plastic and I say clean because it's clean it's really it's nice and clean right which excitingly brings us to our very first gray sprue and open this up take it out and this are insides of the cabin and the door right over here so a bit closer you can have a look at the texture very nice i think that's very nice for the scale very very detailed love the texture and huge again big 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 yeah, so here we have doors, 
obviously all the other parts which go into the doors will then be put on afterwards which is very nice you can paint and detail it beforehand which is great uh, I think there's another one of those gray ones let's bring it up and there is indeed a very interesting one because it has the seeds and other parts but yeah you can have a look at the seeds sun visors etc let's get it out of here right here you can have a look at the detail of the seats that's not bad at all is it and it has a nice texture on it actually very nice i mean 1985 i've seen a lot worse in 1985 so this looks very nice it does back seat i would assume are right over here and then the other interior parts and then obviously the sun visors right over here who are not textured at all they look very flat so yeah maybe you can do something there yourself right right the last one of the spruce as such is a biggie let's go let's do the manual zoom setting here we go right and uh, let's open this up because this has some body parts on it always exciting stuff isn't it just there you go here we go to this side and we here we go there is the hood or bonnet whatever you prefer a little bit rough around the edges so it needs a bit of a cleanup otherwise not too bad that's also part of the light assembly this looks like possibly coming to the rear and the front and then obviously the outer door panels just having a look there's no structure here on the bonnet so that's very interesting something you glue in here i suppose it's a bit of a structure here on this part and obviously you have door insets so you don't need any structure here so this is uh, this is the bar once again the hand test here you go she's a biggie yeah right so then we can start moving towards the bottom pan and the body right and here comes the last bag yeah the body let's open this up big chunk of plastic that to one side put that to one side and let's have a look at the body first okay it looks pretty flat that's pretty good here we go here you see the detail at the bottom bit of tape on here for whatever reason anyway there it is that's not bad and obviously the tank and stuff like that all goes in afterwards as does the entire suspension then uh, here's the inside obviously there's a console and all the other stuff goes put in and you have a bit of a a carpet structure down here where the seats go there's a bit of a cleanup to do but otherwise not too shabby and then last but certainly not least the enormous body that is probably 40 centimeters in length but i might have overestimated it so i suggest we'll get the tape out and see for ourselves there we go we go from here to here 39.5 close enough so and uh let's have a look at the body also i have the detailed like one right over here mustang over here so you don't want to sand that away if at all possible of course you will have to sand there is quite a bit of work on this thing on the edges which is not a problem and obviously yeah there will be a bit of cleanup required but hey it's straight and look at it there's texture here on the boot because the boot lid obviously opens as well yeah this is 
This is a beauty, and this is a, for me anyway, is a project which will take a little bit longer. Um, since I do normally you know, work a little bit, so uh, I only do that in the evenings. But it will be lots of fun, lots and lots of fun. So here we are, a beautiful 71 Mustang body. And uh, that was what was in the box of the, uh, what they call Vanishing Mark 1 Mustang 1971 from the funk folks over at Do Yusha. Let's go upstairs and say goodbye. See you there. And here we are at the end of the uh, finishing Mark 1 dual Mustangs from uh, the fine folks over at Do Yusha. Just a last look to see how big it is. I think we get the idea by now. I think this is pretty phenomenal. I was amazed by the 24 kit is pretty simple. The 12 kit has some very nice detail in some parts and in some parts it looks pretty plain so it leaves uh, some space open for to build yourself a little bit. Do some uh, building yourself, add some parts and to detail it to your heart's content. I think this is a project which you take on over a couple of months maybe weeks for others for me a couple of months and uh, obviously you have to make sure you have enough glue enough paint because it needs lots of that base coat yeah yeah all that stuff you need lots of that but otherwise yeah i think it's a fantastic kit i'm looking forward uh building that maybe in a holiday period and uh have a go at our vanishing mark one well i hope you guys enjoyed that little uh, review special during the week review special from model kit beginner and i wish you all a lovely day and greetings from cape town cheers <laughs>